بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته so we'll continue from where we left off last week and the sheikh was explaining uh, the, uh, one of the nullifiers of Islam which is falling into shirk polytheism so the shaykh he continues he says اعلم أن نواقض الإسلام يشرة نواقض الأول الشرك في إبادة الله تعالى قال الله تعالى إن الله لا, لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء وقال إنه من يشرك بالله فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة ومأواه النار وما لظالمين من أنصار ومنه الضبح لغير الله كمن يذبح للجن أو للقبر So we went through all of this what the Sheikh has uh, mentioned here that we've read in Arabic and the point we reached was the final part of the sentence which was وَمِنْهُ الضَّبْحُ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ كَمَنْ يَذْبَحُ لِلْجِنِّ أَوْ لِلْقَبْرِ which means and from that as examples of shirk, some examples of shirk is sacrificing for other than Allah um, and then the shaykh says like the one who sacrifices for a jinn or for, for a grave or, or a dead person and the ayah as I mentioned here were covered in the previous lessons the previous seven lessons uh, six or seven lessons and the shaykh is just continuing on uh, from them so then the shaykh he continues and he says ذكر المصنف رحمه الله تعالى الناقض الأول من نواقض الإسلام وهو الشرك بالله وهو الشرك بالله تبارك وتعالى الشرك في عبادة الله باتخاذ الانداد والشركاء مع الله وذكر دليلين من القرآن في بيان خطورة الشرك وسوء آقبة أهله الأول قول الله عز وجل إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء الثاني قول الله سبحانه وتعالى إنه من يشرك بالله فقد حرم الله عليه الجنة ومأواه النار وما للظالمين من أنصار So then the Shaykh gives a quick recap and he says that the author the author of the book Nawaqid al-Islam and Lufa al-Islam may Allah have mercy upon him mentioned the first uh, of the nullifiers which, which are stated in the book and that is shirk as previously mentioned shirk polytheism associating panism worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the shaykh says that this shirk it comes about by taking rivals and partners alongside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the shaykh says that the author mentioned two of the evidences which were mentioned earlier and which which was uh, which we read uh, just now, and whoever is not sure, refer back to the previous lessons. Those ayahs were explained by the Sheikh there. So the Sheikh continues. He says, "ثم ختم ذلك بذكر مثال واحد لبيان الشرك بالله سبحانه وتعالى وحقيقته وهذا من باب التوضيح لشيء بضرب المثال عليه وذكر المثال أو ذكر فرد من أفراد." أو ذكر فرد من أفراده ولهذا قال رحمه الله ومنه الذبح لغير الله منه أي الشرك الذبح لغير الله أي إراقة دم بهيمة العنام على وجه التقرب لغير الله سبحانه وتعالى فهذا من الشرك الأكبر الناقل عن ملنة الإسلام So then the shaykh continues and he says So then the author he finished uh, by mentioning an example to clarify what shirk with Allah means by way of example and its reality. And the shaykh says that this is from the perspective of uh, clarifying and giving us examples, uh, uh, is clarifying through giving examples. And the shaykh says that he states one example uh, in this uh, in in his text uh, and this is just from the point of view of give us, uh, giving us a clarification through an example 
And the Sheikh says, that's why the Sheikh, the original author, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, وَمِنْهُ الظَّبْحُ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ And from it, i.e. shirk, is uh, sacrificing for other than Allah. And then the Sheikh continues, and he mentions, i.e., uh, you know, uh, sacrificing the animal, and it bleeds, obviously, when you sacrifice it. Uh, from the perspective or standpoint of Seeking nearness to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The shaykh says that this is from uh, uh, The greater shirk A shirk akbar And falling into this shirk akbar Then takes you out of the fold of Islam So you become a disbeliever by falling into it And taking part in it So then the shaykh continues He says قَالَ كَمَنْ يَذْبَحُ لِلْجِنِّ أَوْ لِلْقَبْرِ And then he says Like the one who sacrifices to a jinn or to a grave. And the Shaykh he continues, he says, i.e., he says, A Kaman Yadbahu Bahimatal Anami Murikan Damiha or Damuha Mutakarriban Bidalika Lil Jinni Li Yajlibu Lahu Bidalika Nafan O Yadfau Anhu Zurra. كَمَنْ يَبْنِي بِنَاءً أَوْ يُهَيِّئُ مَسْكَنًا لِنَفْسِهِ فَيَذْبَحُ عِنْدَ عَتْبَةِ بَابِهِ عَتْبَةِ بَابِهِ ذَبِيحَةً لِلْجِنِّ لِيَقُوهُ أَوْ لِيَقُوهُ مِنَ الشَّرْ أَوْ لِيَجْلِبُوا لَهُ فِي مَسْكَنِهِ النَّفْعَ وَالْخَيْرِ وَالْفَائِدَةِ وَكَذَلِكَ كَمَنْ يَتَقَرَّبُ لِلْقَبْرِ أَيْ يَتَقَرَّبُ لِلْمَيِّتِ فِي قَبْرِهِ بِأَنْ يَذْبَحُ بأن يذبح له ذبيحة متقربا بها إليه. So we'll just stop there for a second. So then the Sheikh he says, like the one who sacrifices to a jinn or to a grave, a dead person, i.e., the one who sacrifices, um, you know, let's say a cow or another animal and obviously spilling its blood by way of sacrifice to seek nearness to a jinn for example uh, to obtain or attain through this sacrifice some form of benefit or to repel some form of evil or danger or harm then the sheikh says like the one who builds a building uh, for himself and sacrifices right next to its door, right by its door, for example, uh, a sacrificial animal to the jinn to uh, to repel evil from entering his home, for example, or uh, to attain or obtain uh, some form of benefit in his house or in his life, or whatever it might be, some form of goodness or benefit. And then the sheikh says, likewise, like the one who also seeks nearness to a dead person or a, or a grave. In the same way, um, sacrificing an animal uh, um, and seeking nearness to somebody who is dead in their grave uh, and therefore sacrifices a sacrificial animal, for example, to seek nearness to them in the same uh, form, either seeking nearness to them or thinking that they can bring about some form of benefit or repel some kind of evil, etc. So then the Shaykh continues, he says, فَهَذَا كُلُّهُ مِنَ الشِّرْكِ الْأَكْبَرِ النَّاقِلْ مِنْ مِلَّةِ الْإِسْلَامِ لِأَنَّ ذَبْحَ قُرْبَةَ مَنْ أَعْذَمْ الْقُرْبْ وَطَاعَةَ مَنْ أَجَلَّ الطَّاعَاتِ أو مِنْ أَجَلِّ الطَّاعَاتِ بَلْ هُوَ أَعْذَمَ الْإِبَادَاتِ الْمَالِيَّةِ كما أن الصلاة أعظم الإبادات البدنية قد جمع الله سبحانه وتعالى بين هاتين العبادتين العظيمتين في غير موضع من القرآن ومن ذلك قول الله سبحانه وتعالى فصل لربك وانحر أي وانحر لربك فجمع جل وعلا بين هاتين العبادتين العظيمتين الصلاة وهي إبادة, وهي إبادة بدنية بل هي أعظم العبادات البدنية والنحر إبادة مالية وهي أعظم العبادات المالية وقد اجتمع في وقد اجتمع في هاتين العبادتين 
من الظل والخضوع وتعظيم الله وذكره سبحانه وتعالى والاستعانة به وذكره سبحانه وتعالى والاستعانة به وحسن الثقة به جل وعلا وعذم رجاء لكريم موعوده وعظيم فضله إلى غير ذلك من المعاني ما لم يجتمع في غير هاتين العبادتين مما يدل على عذم شأنهما ورفعة مكانتهما وعذم ثبابهما عند الله سبحانه وتعالى وأنهما من أعظم ما يتقرب به المتقربون إلى الله عز وجل خضوعا له عز وجل وشكرا So then the shaykh he mentions that he says all of this he says all of it is shirk sacrificing to other than Allah is an example of shirk and in previous books that were studied and whoever has attended those lessons and whoever has read previous books Usul al-Thalatha, Three Fundamental Principles The Four Principles, Qawad al-Arba Kitab al-Tawheed will be well acquainted with, with some of these examples which leads which fall into shirk and one of the examples brought here is sacrificing an animal to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the examples that have been given here is to a jinn for example which is a common one actually and also to a grave which is also common common examples actually uh, and that still happened today uh, and the shaykh says that he says that whoever does this then he goes out of the the fold of islam he leaves the fold of islam he leaves the the uh, uh, the religion of al-islam by doing this greater shirk and and the shaykh he mentions that a dhabh sacrifice is from the greatest and most mighty and magnificent uh, types of worship on obedience and he says it is and he says rather it is the greatest of worship that's related to your wealth so worship can be through your wealth but it also can be executed through your own effort. And the Sheikh mentions that, he says, that sacrifice here is from the greatest worship that's related to uh, spending your wealth, from a wealth point of view. And he gives a contrast example to us, he gives us the flip side of that example. He's, uh, the Sheikh goes on to say, just like the prayer, our daily prayers are the greatest from the greatest types of worship of using our bodies bodily worship and wealth that uh, uh, let's not use that term might get confusing but using your body to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then salah is the greatest of them and using your wealth to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then that example is by for example buying a goat buying you know sheep etc uh, cattle and slaughtering them for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you're using your wealth to buy that and the Sheikh says that these two types of worship by way of your effort through your body or through your wealth then that uh, Allah has brought together in uh, Surah Al-Kawthar in the second ayah فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ and the Sheikh goes on to say that meaning that and pray to your Lord pray to your Lord so we got prayer there and Allah also mentions straight after that وَنْحَرْ and sacrifice to your Lord. Sacrifice to your Lord as well. And the Sheikh says there's the evidence for what was explained above. And he goes on to say that these two acts of work, great acts of worship related to wealth and your body and effort are brought together here where Allah mentions Fasali li Rabbika one heart. Surah Kothur verse two. And the Sheikh then he goes on to say he says that these are the greatest uh uh two greatest uh, types of worship related to wealth and your body and effort and then he goes on to say and also it shows that through prayer we lower ourselves when we bow and we prostrate we lower ourselves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it brings about and also with sacrifice as well that it brings about that humbleness and lowering yourself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, magnifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking aid with him and being confident upon all of that yeah and then and having that trust 
And then the Shaykh goes on to say, and also having that hope in Allah's what well, in Allah's uh, you know promises, what Allah's promised for the believers, and in the virtue of doing these acts. Uh, and other than that, uh, from the meanings of what the Shaykh's mentioned. And then the Shaykh goes on to say towards the end of this paragraph. And he says that from what is demonstrated upon the um, uh, upon these two types of worship, the prayer and sacrificing, that they have a magnificent and a great place and a great reward. And uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that they are from the greatest types of worship to seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, uh, and also bringing about humbleness and knowing yourself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and showing your gratitude and thanks to him by way of this. So then the shaykh continues and he says, he, he'll give some benefits from the linguistic point of view here. So um, I'll try my best to try and uh, pass that on. Uh, the shaykh says, he says, Wolfa, referring to the fa in fasalli, the letter fa in fasalli. He says, Wolfa, ufi, qolihi, fasalli li rabbika wan harfa o sababiya, a bi sabab anahu ataka wa manna alayka bil khair, aladim, wal manna al wasia, wal fadl al adi al amim, sadli lahu wan har, o al adim, sadli lahu wan har, in ate nakal kothar, fasalli li rabbika wan har. A shukran lahu subhanahu wa ta'ala wa atirafan bimannihi wa judihi wa judihi wa ataihi afridhu jalla wala bi salatik wa afridhu subhanahu wa ta'ala bi nasikatik wa tanhar lahu mutakarriban ilay subhanahu wa ta'ala taliban ajrahu azza wa jalla wa thawaba So then the Shaykh says in this paragraph explaining some linguistic benefits for uh, regarding Surat, uh, Surat Al-Kawthar Regarding the Fa And the benefit here The Sheikh mentions that this Fa This letter, the Fa here It means It means It's a reason It's a reason It's a Fa of reason Why? It makes sense Why? Because if you read the, if you read the first ayah In A'atayna uh, kal Kawthar The Sheikh says that Allah has given you You know, has blessed you has given you, uh, you know, you know, provisions, etc., and all that kind of thing. Then the reason for you praying to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and sacrificing uh, to uh, uh, for Him is because of that reason. The reason because we are blessed. Allah gives us blessings. We have food. We have water. We, we've been given life. You know, all these blessings are around us. And that's the reason why we should pray to him. And that's why Allah says, فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ إِنَّ أَعْتَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرْ فَصَلِّ لِرَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ And the Shaykh explains, and to give thanks as well, and to uh, uh, to confess that, to con- openly confess that uh, the, the what we've been given uh, uh, by way of whether it's wealth, you know, food, drink, peace, tranquility, uh, a good life, wherever it is, from all the many countless blessings, just even our body uh, as well, uh, is enough. If you didn't have anything else, you got your body, you got your vision, that's priceless, you know. So even just looking at that, the blessings that we have just on our body, able to walk, able to move things, able to do our daily duties, whatever it might be, able to see, able to hear, and all these things, that is already countless blessings before we even start talking about anything else. So the Sheikh mentions that, and that's the reason, that's why that far is a sababi, as in a suburb, meaning that's why you should pray. The reason why is why you should pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is because of those blessings that you've been given. Yeah? This is what the Shaykh has mentioned. And then the Shaykh continues, he says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَمَعَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ بَيْنَ هَاتَيْنَ الْإِبَادَتَيْنَ فِي قَوْلِهِ جَلَّ وَلَىٰ قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَاي وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا أول المسلمين قل أيها النبي للمشركين الذين اتخذوا ما الله سبحانه وتعالى الشركاء والأنداد فصرفوا لهم الإبادة وقدموا لهم النظور والقرابين قل لهم مؤلنا توحيدك 
مبينا إخلاصك لربك سبحانه وتعالى صادعا بالحق والهدى ولو كره الكافرون قل إن صلاتي ونسك So then the Shaykh moves on to another ayah that's related to the first evidence and that's from Surah Al-An'am verse 162 to 163. So if we have a look at the meanings uh, of, of, of the translation here. So let's have a look. Surah Al-An'am verse 162. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, verily my prayer, my sacrifice, my living and my dying are for Allah. The Lord of the, ma- the Lord of mankind, jinns, and all that exists. The Lord of the Alamin. He has no partner, and of this I have been commanded, and I am the first of the Muslims. So that's what that means. And the Sheikh explains uh, further. He says that, it's, it, it, and this I was revealed for the Prophet to tell the Mushrikeen, to say to the Mushrikeen, the polytheists, uh, uh, who who took who associated partners alongside Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, and create rivals uh, alongside Ab- uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and directed their worship to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to these uh, f- uh, false gods, uh, their idols and whatever else that they worshipped and that uh, you know, that they seeked uh, nearness to through um, taking out, you know, making oaths and um, bringing forth sacrifices and other than that from the acts of worship. Say to them, Openly with your Tawheed, the Tawheed of Allah, clarifying that uh, your Ikhlas to your Lord, clarifying that all of the worship with Ikhlas, with with pure pureness, that all of that worship, all worship is purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it cannot be um, directed anywhere else. And you know, essentially that's the meaning of Tawheed, that you don't share any worship with other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you don't share it with anybody else. All of it is for Allah 100% always. All the time. And that come out with this. Uh, 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 when he was told to say this ayah. And tell them. Uh, tell the mushrikeen. Then come out with the truth. And the guidance. And even if the disbelievers dislike it. And then the sheikh says. He mentions. He breaks the ayah down. He says. قُلْ inna salati wa nusuki. He says, وَإِنَّا هُنَا مِنَ الْمُؤَكَّدَاتِ وَيُؤْتَى بِهَذَا الْمُؤَكَّدِ بِالْجُمُلِ الْخَيْرَاتِ كَمَا هُنَا So then, the Shaykh mentions that, he looks at the start of the ayah, he says, inna, and the meaning of inna, so brings some more linguistic benefits here. He says, inna, it, it's related to um, emphasis. It, it brings about emphasis of what comes after. So, inna salati wa nusuki. Verily or indeed, uh, my prayer and my sacrifice, yeah. So it's bringing that emphasis uh, in in the sentence. Salati wa nusuki ida ka ida ka na al mukhatab munkiran or shibh munkir wa hada fihi min al dalala an al mushrikin kanu fi hadi al ibada al ashrik bilay wa tikhad al andad ma ma Allahi subhanahu wa taala wa li hada amr Allah azza wa jal nabiyahu an yaqul lahum مؤلنا مصرحا صادعا بالحق أنه مخالف لهم في ذلك. So then the reason why this I was revealed as well from the reasons uh, where the Sheikh mentions here that this shows us that the polytheists used to take part in these acts of worship, but they used to direct it away from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and so the Prophet was commanded to clarify and uh, uh, to clarify to them. That he is in opposition to what they do, and that's why I said that indeed my prayer, my sacrifice, uh, and my living and and my and my dying is for Allah, the Lord of mankind, Allah only. Yeah, opposing their shirk basically, opposing the shirk that they're upon. And so the shirk continues. He says. ولذلك الله عز وجل نبيهم أن يقول لهم مؤلنا مصرحا صادم بالحق أنه مخالف لهم في ذلك. And then the Sheikh mentions the ayah again, just as reference. Uh, and he says, meaning, what does it mean? قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَاءِ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ i.e. he says, مُخْلِسًا i.e. purely for Allah's sake. All of it, 100% of worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nowhere else. مُخْلِسًا فِي ذَلِكَ كُلِّهِ لِلَّهِ كُلِّهِ All of it for Allah to Allah جَلَّ وَعَلَى لَا أُسَلِّ إِلَّا لَهُ وَلَا أَذْبَهُمْ وَأَنْحَرْ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ 
سبحانه وتعالى فهذا تقرب والتقرب والتقرب لا يكون إلا لله سبحانه وتعالى I either I don't pray except to Allah and I don't sacrifice except to Allah سبحانه وتعالى فهذا تقرب the Sheikh says and so this seeking nearness through worship it isn't except it isn't but to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it does not, it's not, should not go anywhere else it should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is it so the shaykh has emphasized that to us so we move on to the next paragraph and the shaykh he goes on to say wa taqarrubu bahimatul an'ami bi iraqati damiha la yakunu la li jinn wa la li qabr wa la li hajar wa la li shajar wa la li ghayri dhalika wa inna ma yakunu lilladhi ajra ad-dama في أروقها سبحانه وتعالى والذي تفضل بها وبكل نعمة جل وعلا فالعبادة لا تكون إلا للمنعم. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say to wrap this up here. The Sheikh he says seeking nearness. Yeah, he says through by way of sacrificing, spilling the blood of the animals. I sacrificing uh, uh, an animal, for example. Uh, he says it isn't. It's not to a jinn, and nor is it to a grave or a dead person, nor is it to a stone, nor is it to a tree, or anything else from that which is from the created, the things that are created. And he says, rather, it is to who? It is to the one who allows the blood to circulate in these, in those animals, in their circulatory systems, allows them to live, the one who gave them life, basically, and allows the blood to go through their their veins and pass through the veins and pass around the body yeah through the veins and the arteries and that is of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah and and the one who has brought about all of these blessings and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah is the one who sends blessings to 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 his creation so then the shaykh says therefore by understanding that then worship is only worship should only be directed to the one who is the giver of all of this these blessings you know um uh, uh, and uh, reward where uh, allah rewards you provides for you uh, gives you these blessings therefore it's allah the one who is who provides all of this therefore by default then he is uh, to be worshiped and nothing else then the sheikh brings an ayah from surah an-nahl he says وقال الله لا تتخذوا إلهين اثنين إنما هو إله واحد فإياي فرحبون فإياي فرحبون وله ما في السماوات والأرض وله وله الدين واصبا أفغير الله تتقون وما بكم من نعمة فمن الله. so then if we go and have a look at the meaning of that ayah and they, these are the two three ayahs from Surah al nahl starting from verse 51 I believe verse 51 and Allah said O mankind take not two gods in worship etc verily he Allah is the only God then fear me Allah much and me alone i.e. be away from all kinds of sins and evil deeds that Allah has forbidden and do all that Allah has ordained and worship none but Allah to him belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth and ad-deen wasiba is his i.e. perpetual sincere obedience to Allah is obligatory none has a right to be worshipped but Allah will you then fear any other than Allah and then the start of the third ayah, just the beginning. And who, and whatever of blessings and good things you have, it is from Allah. And that uh, that's evidence for what the shaykh has mentioned in the above paragraph. So then the shaykh, he goes on to say, فَالْإِبَادَةُ إِنَّمَا تَكُونُ لِلْمُنْئِمَ الْمُتَفَضِّلِ الْمَانْ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَلَى وَإِرَاقَةُ الدَّمِ دَمُ بَهِيمَةِ الْأَنَامِ تقربا لا يكون لأي أحد كائن من كان وإنما يكون للذي أجر الدم في عروق بهيمة العنام وتفضل بها ومن سبحانه وتعالى فإذا جعلت النسيكة النسيكة لغيره سبحانه كان ذلك من الشرك الأكبر الناقل من من ملة الإسلام. So then the Sheikh says, uh, uh, given as additional benefit and reminding us, he says so therefore all worship 
then it is for the one who gives those blessings, like I was mentioned in the ayah, and whatever blessings and good things you have is from Allah. So all of that is from Allah. So therefore, then worship is should only be purely directed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not anything else. And therefore, and is in this example of sacrifice, then uh, sacrificing an animal, it should only be to seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who gave life to in the first place, and not to anything else, whatever it may be. It's only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Shaykh goes on to say, uh, so if you make your, sacrif your sacrifice to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that, then by that you have fallen into the greater shirk, which takes you out of the fold of Islam, i.e. you become a disbeliever, and by that all of your good deeds are erased, and you're left with nothing. So then the shaykh continues, he says, قَالَ قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاةِ وَنُسُكِ جَمْعَ بَيْنَ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسُكِ جَمْعَ بَيْنَ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسُكِ وَنُسُكِ هُوَ الذَّبْحِ قَالُهُ نُسُكِ أَيْ ذَبْحِ so we'll stop there. So I'll just explain this last bit. I'll translate it and then we'll stop there for today, inshallah. So the Shaykh, he says, and he mentions the ayah again for us for our reference, قُلْ إِنَّ salati wa nusuki, And he says that this ayah, it demonstrates and shows us and brings about, it brings together the uh, uh, um, the prayer and sacrifice. And a nusuk in Arabic, it means sacrifice. And that's what the Shaykh mentioned. And Nusuki, then he mentioned, he says, it's like saying, Dhabhi, my sacrifice. Nusuki, my sacrifice. That, you know, the sacrificial animal that he brought, the sacrifice that he didn't, you're doing it for Allah. For Allah's sake, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To seek near and esteem. So inshallah, we'll, we'll stop there and uh, we'll continue um, uh, this from uh, next week. Ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant wa astaghfiruka wa tubi ilaik. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته